Can you see and hear me okay? Just give me a thumbs up. Uh, I cannot see I'm you. I'm sorry, I can't see you. I can hear you, I can't see you. Yeah, it's the same for me. How about now? Not yet. One moment, I'm just going to refresh. All right, do you see me now? Um, I can see you, Ali. I, uh, I can see Christy, but not Ali. Maha, I think you're muted. I see both of you, Ali. I, uh, this is, yes, I can see Mohammed, Christine, and Ali. I can see you. It's okay. Yeah. So let's well, I, I can see but not Ali. Mohammed, can you make sure that you are not just clicked on Christine? Uh, let me see. If you try clicking on Global Nomads Group, you will see Ali. Uh, yes, now I can see her. Hello, Ali. Hello, wonderful. Right. Okay. Hello. Let's get started then, and we might have some more educators join. I'm not sure. Um, you know me, I'm Ali. I work at Global Nomads Group. Uh, Maha Mohammed, it's a pleasure to be with you this afternoon. Uh, today, our workshop is going to focus on the Global Citizenship Project. Um, as you know, this is one of a series of GNG skills workshops that we offer uh, that give you a chance to learn more and share your experiences about specific topics. Um, and this one specifically will give us a chance to look at the goals of the Global Citizenship Project, uh, to analyze some past examples, um, and discuss any challenges or successes that you may be facing. Um, so once Maha comes back, maybe we can do some reintroductions from you all. Um, Maha, welcome back. Can you see and hear yes. me? Is it the problem within me? Is the problem? It's okay now. No, it's okay. Yes. Good. So let's do uh, some reintroductions from you both. I would yes. love to know. Uh, where just an update as to where you are in the Youth Talk program. Um, you can introduce your name and location for each other. Yeah. And then uh, any questions that you have about the Global Citizenship Project. Maha, why don't we start with you? Okay. So my name is Mehe. We already know each other, me and Mohammed, yes. Uh, so um, I've been teaching for 10 years. And uh, as far as uh, the, the curriculum is concerned, we are um, this, this week we're going to have uh, IVC3, and we are in Module 3. Uh, that's it. And we, are, we, we already started with the project. We assigned the tasks, we shared the rules, so uh, we already start, started. But uh, the conflict trees, we analyzed things, but we haven't... Uh, there are some questions we want to, to ask. May I ask now the questions? Sure, go ahead. Yes. Just um, the timing of the project. Are we restricted with certain, certain sum, so we cannot exceed more than uh, 15 minutes? I don't know how. how we're going to have a, a, a documentary, so is it, uh, are we obliged to follow not to exceed some time, not more than 15 minutes, for example? We don't know the exact uh, timing. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. We'll, we'll get to all questions uh, after Mohammed introduces himself. Go ahead. 
Hello, my name is Mohamed Tijani. Uh, I collaborate with another Mohamed. <laughs> That's Mohamed Liazidi. Uh, he is one normally who is in charge of the class. I, I'm just a coordinator. Uh, I have joined, okay, yeah, I joined the GNG last year and I enjoyed it uh, with my class. We worked together during the whole year. Uh, despite some ups and downs, especially time constraints and the programs and uh, motivation and many things. Uh, well, uh, I've been teaching English for, I, I don't want to say that because that would show that I'm very old. <laughs> right. For nearly 40 years now. <laughs> but I have gone through different positions as uh, a trainer, uh, an inspector, a teacher, uh, an educator, you know, I've been through different positions. Uh, now, uh, at the moment, uh, I limited myself to teaching in a private school just to keep in touch with the, the, the teaching business. Uh, I, I, I coordinate the work of uh, some teachers. I, I also uh, try to, to, to train uh, the new ones and to, to recruit the, the new teachers and so on. So that's what my job at the moment. Uh, uh, well, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, connected from home because uh, Tuesday is uh, Tuesday morning in my uh, free day. Uh, and uh, concerning the project, uh, well, I can talk about my last project. I mean, last year we uh, yeah we carried out a project about road accidents and. Uh, yes, the problems and the dangers of crossing ro the road, especially our students. So we made a short video, and uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I'm sure you, you, might, you might have seen it on on YouTube or uh, yeah on GNG, but it was not very successful for the simple reason that we don't have uh, experts uh, doing the you know the the videoing and uh, especially organizing the the. the the photos and different things, and the writing as well. So uh, we had a few problems last year, but it was a success for one reason, because at the end of the year, we showed it to different parents, and uh, we also called the authorities. Uh, we raised, I mean, their awareness to the problem of our students crossing the road next to the school. But for the time being, they haven't done much. Uh, uh, for the simple reason that they say the school is in a neighborhood where there are a lot of buildings and it's not the right site for the school. So there have been a few uh, yes, discussions and negotiations with the school. We don't know. Uh, we are still waiting for some concrete results. I know that from time to time they send uh, policemen to, to, yes, to, to organize and control the crossing. That's about last year's project. For this year, our students decided to work on something very uh, particular to the school itself. It's about rubbish in the classrooms. Uh, as it is a private school, so students bring different things into the classroom and they just drop them. And uh, we have uh, a few cleaners who suffer and complain all the time because if you see the classrooms in the morning at 8 o'clock, they are clean arranged, organized, and so on. At 6 o'clock in the evening, it's just a mess. And they, they have to do that every day, again and again. And the students want to raise the awareness of uh, the Hulk school about this problem. Maybe it's a, a very particular problem, a local one, but it seems that it may be of interest to our partners as well and uh, to other schools. Okay, so perhaps I can tell you more later. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mohammed. Um, it's great to hear about your experience both last year and this year. Um, briefly, are there any questions or topics that you want to focus on today in our session? Thank you. Uh, I discussed with Mohammed, and I think w one of the main problems is that getting students to uh, yes uh, to get organized into teams, uh, to have a leader, to have people who collect information and so on. Uh, they they don't seem to agree 
on what to do and so on. Okay, but uh, in general, uh, we are trying to to follow our plan of action. And uh, I think uh, Mohammed has one of the has posted this. Uh, I I don't know if I have it here. But it's they have posted the planning and uh, they're carrying it out. But for the time being, uh, I, well, I, I would like to see Mohammed first before I could say anything. Okay. Uh, the questions that we have probably is uh, whether it's going to be again a video or is it going to be just a poster? Uh, they have students haven't decided yet because of the equipment. I mean, we lack some equipment. So once we get that, perhaps I can tell you more about it. And I'm sorry because Mohammed should have been here, but he has class. That's why. That's okay. Uh, it's optional. I can't answer. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in so we can have Kathy introduce herself too. But Mohammed, we will definitely talk about the questions you've brought up, um, how to help your students collaborate and work in teams, and also how to pick uh, a project format. Do we do a video? Um, do we do a campaign? What are our resources? These are all great questions. Yeah. Um, welcome, Kathy. I wonder, if, can you introduce yourself and share where you're connecting from? And then also, just briefly, where your students are in the process? Thank you. I'm Kathy Collins. I'm a, a library media specialist at Sharon High School in Sharon, Massachusetts in the USA. And uh, this is my first year getting involved with Global Nomads. I'm going to be really honest. I've been a bit peripheral to the process. I've been attending the PD workshops. Um, but two of our two of my colleagues are actually running the program this year. I'm sort of just learning and observing from the sidelines. Um, one of my other hats that I wear, I'm the PD chair for an organization called Massachusetts Computer Using Educators. Um, and as part of our upcoming fall conference, I'm going to be hosting a global education student conference, um, a showcase where students can present the kinds of projects that we're talking about today. So um, that's part, I, I've always been fascinated by this topic. So um, that's part of why I'm here. <laughs> Thank you. We're happy to have you. Um, are there any particular questions or topics that you wanted us to address today? I, I'm not specifically. I think I'm just here to learn. You know, some of, about some of the amazing projects that you guys have done, um, and yeah, just, just to learn. No specific questions yet. <laughs> Thanks. Great. Well, please jump in. Um, we're a small group today. Um, so please feel free at any point to share questions or chat a question to me. Um, we'll also have this recording for you or any colleagues who weren't able to join after, um, as well as for other educators in g and programs. So uh, the plan that I have for today <coughs> is for us to start by looking at one or two sample projects from previous years, not from any of your schools to keep Hi. it um, Hold on, because um, I'm in the middle of a meeting. And uh, Kathy, I just muted you just so we can hear a little bit better. Um, <clears throat> for us to look at that um, an example to talk about how students came up with the process um, and anything that they could have done differently, how they could have collaborated, so we can look at something concrete. And then for us to talk a little bit about uh, specific steps of the process um, and to reflect on how we can share the projects after your students finish them or how they can be continued. Um, before I dive into our first project example, any questions or thoughts? Okay. Great. So. I'm going to show you one example project um, from a year or two ago. It's a video. It was made by students in Jordan who were partnered with a group in the US. <clears throat> the problem that they had identified was stereotyping of Arabs and in the US um, and stereotyping of Arabs and Muslims in general around the world and the violence that is caused because of that. So they wanted to create a project to break down some stereotypes 
um, and in general encourage people to be more compassionate and open-minded. So this is a short video and as you watch it I want you to think about uh, who their audience might have been, what activities the students uh, probably did to get to this video, to get to the end product, and how you think they collaborated with their partners. So I am going to share my screen now. Can you just give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen? Yes. <laughs> okay. Great. Here we go. What do you know about Arabs? Do you think that media provides you with the right perspective about them? Hollywood movies like The Sheikh in 1921, The Son of the Sheikh in 1926, cartoon characters like Aladdin and Alibaba all have played a great role in implementing the 3B syndrome. <coughs> Bombers, billionaires, or billy dancers. Do not believe everything you hear. Arabs are around 422 million people, only 19% of which are illiterate. 75% of the scientific competencies in the United States, England, and Canada are of Arab origins. Arab women are loving housewives, dedicated mothers, successful workers, managers, and decision makers. At the end, Arabs are communities which have strengths and weaknesses, exactly as each community does. Do not be misled and know me before you judge me. So I'd love to hear some initial reactions uh, from you all. What uh, was effective about that piece for you and who do you think they were targeting? Thank you. Maybe we can hear from one or two people. Uh, I like I like the video. Uh, it well done, technically. Uh, well, uh, I'm sure that the audience is probably the, the Western yes Western countries and uh, people who don't know the Arabs mainly, and. Uh, Perhaps what the video is trying to, to tell people is that Arabs does not mean just terrorists or bombers or, or billy dancers, but uh, Arabs are also scientists and uh, unfortunately most of their scientists are, yes, uh, are what we call the brain draining, right? And they have, they have gone, they've gone to other countries to live there because probably they have more uh, chance to, to well uh, to grow up and, 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 and to improve their knowledge uh, but it doesn't mean that the Arabs are not doing anything but it seems that the Arabs uh, are uh, nice people who just women are how housewives yes but uh, they raise a family they raise a whole generation and so on we have a problem of illiteracy it's everywhere perhaps uh, I mean uh, in Morocco uh, probably we have near, nearly over 40 percent of the people are illiterate and most of them are women so maybe it's something that we need to think about uh, in order to yes to overcome this problem of stereotyping thank you thank you Mohammed. I think that's a great point um, this video is for a very specific audience and the students thought really hard about that this video was not for their classmates in Jordan. Their classmates in Jordan already know um, the many qualities, the many positive qualities um, about Arabs in their community. Um, they maybe didn't need to see this, but their target audience was somewhere else. So they made a message that perhaps was a bit more simple than the conversations they had every day in order to be effective. Um, Kathy or Maha, um, what activities do you think that the students did in order to be able to produce this video? Thank you. Well, um, this is Kathy. With any video project, you have to do some organizing of your ideas and thoughts, um, storyboarding, I imagine, um, to figure out what comes first, what's the most important message. Um, 
I loved the three Bs, by the way. <laughs> That's great. Um, yeah, and probably, uh, although they're the experts, but a bit of research about their audience, I would think, um, depending on what the teacher had in mind. Thank you. So research, organizing, assigning roles, storyboarding, or outlining is another way to say that, like the steps in our in our project. Exactly. Um, where do you, Maha, where, where do you think they ask to their partners for help? Um, okay, before uh, I answer your question, just uh, about the target audience, I would say it's. Uh, I would say this is for general people, all people in the world. It's not just for the Western. So I would say that even as Arabs, we don't know much about ourselves. So we don't know that the, these percentages. So it's very, it, the cartoons, the 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 way the it was. Uh, yes, it the, the it was very. I, Uh-oh. Maha, I think we lost you. Let me know if you can see and hear us. Um, maybe open it back up uh, to Kathy and Mohammed. Where do you think that they ask their partners for help or advice? Uh. Probably, uh, I mean, if I were doing this video, I would ask my partners to tell me about what people in their country think about Arabs, right? Uh, perhaps uh, asking them to, to, to carry out a survey in their school and find out how much people know about the Arabs, probably. Uh, that would help a lot. And at the same time, uh, Maybe uh, I would I would like to know what would hurt the Westerners if ever I talk about stereotyping. I mean, do 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 the people in in their country accept uh, to be criticized or to yes to be pointed out uh, as uh, uh, people who don't understand the, the the world outside? I mean, probably they understand themselves, but they don't understand. because this is an opinion that probably many people have of the Americans is that they think more of themselves than the others. <laughs> okay, which is a stereotype, of course, and. Uh, Maybe it would be a good thing to know if that is really what happens by asking our partners what they think. And uh, I, yes, I would like to know if they, they got any help from outside to make this, you know, this video, or is it the students themselves who did it? I mean, uh, how did they manage to make uh, this uh, video? I mean, and to, to to attract the attention of the audience because you know uh, when you watch the video, you can't just you, know, you, you need more. You you keep on uh, watching until the end, so which is very good. It's a very good technique. And did they? Get, I mean, did the students themselves who did it, or did, did they get any help from outside? Thank you. Thank you, um, Maha. We'll come back to you in just a moment. I just want to follow up on what Mohammed said. Um, so yes, it's uh, the students did do a great job in this process of asking their partners. You know, what are the stereotypes in your community or in your news of us? And perhaps Maha, they also asked their own community. What are the stereotypes we have of each other? What are the stereotypes we see in the movies about ourselves? Yes. You're absolutely right that this is uh, this has many audiences. Yes. It's and not I, just, go ahead. It's, just, it's not just for the West, I said. Uh, I just want to confirm my idea, OK? And it was it's a great job. That was an idea. Thank you. I think. Um, Maha, what you bring up is really important. We want projects to uh, be useful for the students' own communities as well as a broader community. So perhaps this project prompted discussion uh, among their own class or their own school or their own families about how people see their communities and about how they see themselves. And it's also a great media piece to break down stereotypes of people outside, of people in the West or in the East or wherever that may be. 
Um, and Mohammed, the question you brought up um, about stereotypes in their partners' communities, stereotypes of Americans, for example, since that's who their partners were, that's exactly the kind of questions that we want you to be asking your students. Okay, we want to do a project, they say, about stereotypes of people in the Middle East or people in North Africa. Um, what about stereotypes in other parts of the world? How are you personally affected by stereotyping? What are stereotypes or what are ways that you are discriminated against? So that students start thinking a little bit more broadly. Um, any other thoughts about this video? I think, yes, uh, again. <laughs> Uh, so I think this the video is a, a good implementation of the curriculum, the first part of the curriculum. When they think about stereotypes, uh, how 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 to, the, the biases between uh, yes, what we think about others and what others think about us, it's good because it, it implements uh, it's a great part of the curriculum of uh, GNG. I think it's uh, that's in that way it's very good. Thank you. Thank you, Maha. I, I agree. Um, this really came from the discussions in the curriculum, and this video, the idea came about because of dialogue between the partner schools in a video conference. This was a problem they had identified together. And I think one of the most important questions that you can ask your students as they're developing their project uh, is what, uh, which project is going to benefit the most from the opportunity to work with a school in another country. Which, upper, which project idea is going to benefit the most from collaboration with our partners? Because students can, can do a project anytime if they wanted to. We know they might not have the chance, but this is a unique opportunity for them to think about how collaboration with someone from a different place uh, can really help them move along in their own community. So I'm going to show you another example now uh, that is a little bit different. Mohammed, you acknowledge that that video is very polished, right? It's, it's produced very well. And the students did that themselves. But we don't expect every student to be able to use technology in that way or have access to it. And that's not necessarily what makes it a good project either. What makes it a good project is that the students had great conversation, um, they talked to their communities, they shared outlines with each other. It's collaboration that made the project great, not just their tech skills. But I want to show you um, another project that is a bit more low tech, but I think had an equal, if not greater, community impact. So this project, uh, I'm going to share it on my screen. Can everyone see? You can just give me a thumbs up. Yes. Great. So this project was made by a group of students at a middle school in Pakistan in a city called Rawalpindi, which is outside of the capital. And they identified the issue of child labor in their community. So young people uh, leaving school in order to go work or families not being able to send their children to school at all because they needed more income, they needed uh, money from uh, everyone in the family to help support each other. And I'm going to go through this presentation a little quickly. Um, it's a PowerPoint presentation so showing some actions that they did. And at any point, if you have questions, please feel free to jump in. Oh, we'll see if it loads. Okay. So they collaborated with a partner school in the U.S. This was last year. <clears throat> and they decided, I'm just going to summarize their text, to create an awareness campaign to address the problem of child labor in their community 
and in Pakistan, and to fight against uh, the mental, physical, and social harm that it does to child laborers um, who make up a quarter of the workforce in their country. So here in this slide, they're showing you some of the research that they did. Um, in the first step of the project, they identified their problem, and they also started to do some research and learn more about it. So their goal was to motivate children and parents to send, uh, send children to school for education. So they actually organized a community meeting um, to motivate families to help sponsor low-income children. And they also advocated schools themselves. They lobbied schools themselves um, to offer free or lower cost education and classes. So here, this is kind of the milestone two of their project, right, where they investigate the problem and plan. They actually outlined some of the activities that they did. They made posters to hang around the school. They had meetings with the affected communities. They went into multiple schools, not just their own, to ask principals to give seats for low-income children without fees. They met with parents to uh, motivate the community to sponsor children who might not have access to education. And they also, thinking that that wasn't enough, um, offered classes themselves, so some direct action. So these are just some pictures. This was a meeting in their school. There's some of the posters. Some meetings in the community. meetings with principals at different schools to try to get them to offer lower cost or free spots. Meetings with parents. Free classes. And they also did a great job of acknowledging some of the challenges that they faced. Uh, so people there are being resistant to talk about this, their target audience being unwilling to share, um, and how they overcame that challenge. And they also acknowledge that the program needs to continue, that it's not enough to do classes once or twice, um, but they identified opportunities to continue classes um, that will specifically relate to young people being able to earn more later on in their lives. So I'm curious to hear from all of you, um, what was effective to you about that project? And where do you think the, they worked with their partners? Thank you. It was very impressive, I thought, because it had that interactive element where they weren't just researching, they were out in the community uh, actively getting involved and trying to make a difference. Um, I, I would imagine it took a lot of coordination between the different members of the group. And um, Kathy, I'm going to build off of that for a moment. Um, Mohammed brought this up as a question before. How do you get your students to work together? Um, how do you think that the teacher might have helped the students organize themselves for this project? Kathy, what do you think? Uh, Go ahead, Mark. Uh, can I just say about, about the PowerPoint? Yeah, it is, it is well done again. It's a very good job. And uh, the theme is wonderful because we we have that too. I mean, which means that the problem uh, still exists everywhere in the world. And uh, maybe uh, yes, uh, it impressed me because uh, I still see children working instead of being in their classes, and that's that's really a, a bad thing to see when you see children. Uh, uh, instead of playing and going to school and learning, they are uh, they become bread 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 uh, winners or bread earners, what we say, we call it, yeah, which is a bit of a problem, yes. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, 
my I mean impresses me is the the amount of work they have done because I'm sure that they have spent a lot of time trying to collect the information and so on, uh, and to go and visit families and talk to them and uh, it's it's really time consuming and this is what we lack here. I mean we don't have time because uh, as I told you er, some time ago, it's just that in Morocco English is a foreign language and we spend about two three hours a week uh, in class I mean uh, with our students so we don't see them very very much and uh, whereas I'm sure that in Pakistan English is uh, the first foreign language and uh, just as in Jordan as well I mean the, they, they uh, yes they use English more often and probably other teachers may contribute because they speak English right so uh, in our classes this is a handicap for them most of them find it difficult to to do a project in English uh, and uh, yeah the, the, that's that's one of the and and the time constraints as well that that's that's one of the main problems here but I'm sure that we are doing our best to make them carry on with the the, the action plan and to, to to get to the final result I hope thank you very much Thank you. This project actually none of the students um, speak fluent English. This project was completely done in Urdu, um, the national one of the other national languages of Pakistan. Um, and they the students put together the writing for the project and their teacher helped translate it so that a wider audience could could see and understand. But since their target audience was their own community, they did it in their own native language. Um, and then the sharing part they wanted to be in English. Um, so it's your choice if your students want to do an English project, but if your audience is your local community um, that doesn't speak English or that's not comfortable for them, then they can absolutely do the project and they should do the project in whatever uh, language, whatever style is going to work best for them. Just like this is a community that doesn't have much internet access, so a video isn't really going to help. But a door-to-door -door campaign or meetings in person is much more effective. So for your students, I encourage you to ask them not what is the coolest project we can do, but what is going to help our target audience the most. Kathy or Maha, did you have anything you wanted to share? Thank you. Yes. Um, yes. Go ahead, Kathy. If you have a no. Uh, no, it's okay. Go ahead. Jump in. So just I want uh, to yes. The the video is uh, is very strong. It's very powerful. It's stronger, believe me, than having petitions, writing petitions, and uh, to governments and uh, having demonstrations. It's stronger. So it's a peaceful piece and. Um, I think they collaborated. The two partners collaborated a lot, even in gathering info, in gathering statistics, rates, pictures, taking photos. Um, so I think uh, this shows uh, collaboration between the two par the two part parts, uh, Pakistanis and uh, Americans. Because I th I think that even in America, some Pakistanis children are wo may, may work, so they can even have uh, uh, photos. They can uh, record things, so they can. Uh, I think this is uh, this is good. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Maha. I think you identified a really important part of collaboration: uh, sharing statistics, helping each other with research, just giving feedback, um, asking if this issue is important in your community. You know, child labor. Their U.S. partner said in the U.S. Um, or rather, I'll say that again their partners in the US didn't really know about child labor in their own community but through this project they learned oh child labor is also a big problem in the US but it's not as visible so what can we do here I think that's the same this is what, what's happening for us in our project when we when we heard about the project of the Bronx we did not know what's the meaning of gentrification in America so now we are aware of this issue and uh, I think in US in America 
So now, thanks to the dialogue, we are uh, we are aware of this issue in America, and they they are aware of our uh, our problems here in Tunisia even. Thank you. Thank you, Maha. Kathy, did you want to add? Um, nothing to add. I just I really appreciate seeing these examples of really outstanding projects. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Maha, I, I agree. Uh, I purposefully picked two projects that show collaboration in different ways. Um, you don't have to make the same video or the same mural or the same event in order to collaborate, but you can inform each other's topics and hopefully help your partners with your questions. Yes, even in questionnaires, we can have questionnaires, they exchange questionnaires, they ask each, each, each other questions. And even for, for our pupils here in Tunisia, they don't, all, they don't all have access to the internet. So they can uh, exchange statistics, rates, because in America, the, the internet is more available. So uh, they can help each other. Okay, so to, uh, to overcome problems, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. Um, let's open that, that question up more of how do we help our groups collaborate. Um, are there any other ideas that you have about how partner groups can work together? Thank you. Uh, I think G Connect is, 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 is really a, a, a wonderful tool. I mean, but so far it hasn't been used in, in, uh, in a very profitable way by both partners, I mean, uh, the Moroccan side and uh, the American side, uh, they still uh, hesitate to, to, contact, to connect to each other. And I don't know what the reason it is, but uh, we try to urge the students. And uh, there is always this reluctance to join. Uh, but it can be a very good tool, I mean, to exchange and share ideas and discuss the, the the problems that we can't talk about uh, during the IVC uh, session. Uh, I, I tried to talk to, 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 uh, to my, uh, my partner, uh, Mohammed, uh, about encouraging students, at least appointing one student to report and to, to connect uh, and, and to share the ideas of the other, the other students. Uh, some of them have done it, but uh, not that successfully. We hope that, uh, because uh, I, I know uh, there is something that uh, we learned from our partners. They're going to talk about the selection of schools, how students select, are selected for a school. I mean, they need a high score, they need a uh, yes. And their school is uh, uh, famous for not being selected because, uh, you know, uh, many people think that it's only people with low scores who join the school. And the students want to, to, to say something about it and to say that uh, even low, you know, uh, l l l schools with low scores can g give good results, something like that. And uh, for the time being, the students don't know because here in Morocco, uh, this doesn't apply. I mean, uh, if if you join a private school, it means you, ha you should have the, the fees. If you have the fees, you can. If you don't have the fees to join a private school, then you go to a public school. Um, and public schools accept all types of scores, all types of, of students. So therefore, the, the problem does not uh, concern them for some time, for, as, as far as, I'm, uh, as I know. Because they pay, they get an, uh, an education. Those who can't pay, they, they go to state schools or public schools. Right, so thank you very much. Um, thank you for sharing. To get back to your earlier question, uh, g and Connect absolutely is a way for students to collaborate, not just in IBCs, but to share ideas in between that. But I do hear that it is sometimes hard to motivate students to join or to post on g and Connect. So I think one idea you shared was uh, nominating or choosing student ambassadors who post on behalf of the class. I think that's a great idea. 
Um, Maha and Kathy, any other ideas or experiences about how to motivate students to share on G&G Connect? Thank you. Or other platforms or tools that you've used if you're new. Thanks. I've not been so directly involved, like I said, with the students this year, so I, I'm not sure I can answer that, um, aside from creative brainstorming. <laughs> um, it's tough. Limited, I mean, Internet makes all the difference, so for those who don't have access to Internet, that's quite a challenge. I'm not sure. Yeah, I loved um, the student ambassador idea, but uh, even then, I don't know if, it might be that big of a problem in certain areas that uh, no one has internet access. So I don't know. What do you suggest? <laughs> sure. um, one thing I've seen some schools do, if they have either limited access or uh, limited engagement, is when you're meeting with your students actually together to do an activity, is to spend the last five minutes brainstorming what you want to post on G&G &G Connect and what questions you have. Write it out together. Um, assign somebody to post it online, or if internet is limited, go with the student right then and there and do it. Um, so I would incorporate, I would recommend combining the posting into the activities that you're leading with your class. We have about 10 minutes left, and I do want to address a few of the questions that were posed earlier, and then also talk about how to share the project. Um, Maha brought up before the question of how long should a project be? We give a guideline in the curriculum um, that a video, sh if you're going to make a video, should be short, right? No more than five minutes because of one, how hard it is to make, and two, people's attention span. But the other project types are really going to depend on your community. Um, if you're doing an event, how long do you think your audience will stay for an event. If you're doing a radio piece, how long uh, do you have available? Um, Maha, can you be a little more specific about what challenge your students are facing? Thank you. It looks like Maha has froze again. Um, so we'll wait for her to come back. Um, Mohammed, you brought up questions before about uh, organizing students into teams and picking different project types. We talked about that a little bit with the examples. Do you have any further questions about that? Thank you. Uh. Yeah, it's just about uh, last year, during the project that we did last year, I didn't want to interfere as a teacher. I let the students decide on the planning, decide on the videoing, I mean, the, taking the videos, deciding on organizing all the information, and even the, the script which is written on the, yes, on the screen. Uh, with, with the, I, I didn't correct the mistakes, I left the mistakes because uh, it's it's a youth talk project, so I'm not young. <laughs> uh, I let the students do most of the projects just to to make them taste the thing that they won't say that it's the teacher who did it or it's. The, uh, and I think this year Mohammed is doing the same thing. I mean, he give, he gives them more freedom. Uh, yes, unless they come and ask. If they ask, then he can be, he can he can try to help. Otherwise, yes, uh, he yes he lets them do their own project because it's their project, uh, and it's their idea to talk about you know uh, the rubbish in the classroom and so on. Uh, we talked about our partners about it. They seem to like the idea, but uh, perhaps it's not a big problem for them. They're not concerned concerning this uh, this problem, okay. uh, and I don't know if. They should go on doing this, or uh, because it's 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 vital for the for, for the school. I mean, it's it's an important subject for the school, 
for our school and probably for the community as well to raise the awareness of students that there are people behind them doing the, the cleaning, the, 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 yes, doing the, uh, a lot of things when they leave the classrooms. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's a, a wonderful spirit for the project. We want this to be a chance for students to be leaders. Um, and that can be hard sometimes when we also want to have a really wonderful project at the end. We want a beautiful video or we want um, a great, perfect event. What's more important to us at G&G &G is that the students have the chance themselves to do the project from beginning to end even if there's mistakes in their English or whatever language they speak, even if it's not perfect. So I encourage you to really prioritize that um, and let students uh, lead the process from beginning to end. So I'm just sharing my screen quickly. We, we had talked about the steps before, but that means letting students pick the problem um, themselves and uh, challenging them to make it deeper or to relate it to their peers. That means <clears throat> um, having them do research, having them plan their teams and how they work with their partners and the activities that they do. And lastly, that means supporting them in the creation and the sharing. And we want students to share their project both locally in their own community and we also want to give them a way to share it beyond their community or globally. So in the last five minutes, I just want to do some quick brainstorming with you all. What might be ways that students can share their work locally and globally? Let's have really quick comments. Excuse me, can you repeat the question, please? Because I, I couldn't hear it uh, very well. That's Thank you. Sure. Um, how can you help your students share their project locally in your own community and outside your community or globally? Yes. This is my sorry for uh, the interruptions. I don't know what's happening to the internet connection. So uh, I, I think I have a problem of connection. So now, uh, uh, as far as we are concerned, we agreed that to, um, to after finishing the project, we will, uh, of course, uh, post it on GNG. And, um, and we will, uh, this is globally. This to be shown to. Uh-oh. No, um, So posting on GNG. Hear me? Yes, go ahead, Maha. Locally, uh, we will have an event at school, and we will have, uh, because in Tunisia, we have clubs in Tunisia. So every Friday afternoons, we, we, we show, each club shows uh, what, what they are doing. Dances, singing, uh, playing music at school. So this is, uh, we will plan to have, uh, to show our, our film, our video uh, in the at school, and with some, uh, with the, uh, as an event at school, we will invite some guests and uh, some parents, and they will see uh, to, just to make them aware of the issue. We are working on uh, on the bad conditions of learning in some primary schools in Tunisia. So uh, this is a way to sensitize them uh, that we need to help uh, to help each other to, to each other to have uh, to have good schools, good classrooms, good equipment, good conditions for uh, for learning. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Those are some great ideas. Um, if your school has an assembly or has an event, ask for 10 or 15 minutes to show your project or present it. Um, mm -hmm. Share it at parent events, community events. We want students to be sharing beyond just their age group. Kathy, did you have anything to add? Thank you. Uh, yeah, I think we do Similar to what you're talking about, we have uh, assemblies, we have culture fairs um, where we share out. We have um, I offer the library as a place where students can showcase their work periodically throughout the year, um, and also on my library website. That's another way to reach people by posting the projects, um, so they have a larger audience. Absolutely. 
Um, so, Kathy, what you bring up is really important, which is making sure students document or record the project, especially if it's an in-person event or if it's posters or if it's a photo campaign. Um, we want students to be taking pictures of the whole process so that they can then share it afterwards. Yeah. And one thing I'll do, yeah? Oops, I was just going to add also this upcoming um, computer conference that I mentioned will be a great opportunity for them to share their work with um, other students doing global projects around the state. So I'm, I'm very excited about that. Go ahead, sorry. <laughs> That's it. I was just going to say that they'll have um, the opportunity at a table to share and then also we're doing something called an Ignite session where each student team gets two minutes to summarize their project in front of the audience of other um, students and teachers who are also interested in global education. Wonderful, thank you. Um, one thing that we can do at G&G &G to help you in this process is we have a template, a PowerPoint, a presentation example um, of how to talk about the project. So I will share yeah. that with you all after the session. Um, it's just a, a good tool to help students organize their thoughts. Mm. And then also on G&G &G Connect in the Youth Talk course, I'm just going to share this again. At the end of Module 4, you'll see all of these uh, activities for your students to post their project work. And there's also a submission form, which your class only needs to fill out once. But it's a little bit of information about the project, um, the type, the theme, the languages, so that we can then share it on our own project website, which has viewers around the world, um, and also identify other opportunities or places that your students might submit their work. So in order for us to help you share it globally, we need you to fill out the form on G&G &G Connect so we have all the information. We are at the end of our time now together, um, so I do just want to thank you so much for your energy and your attendance and time. Um, I'm excited to see what your students all do together um, in their projects this year. And I'm happy to stay another minute or two if you have any other questions. Um, at all about the project to help answer. But if you need to go to class or to home or to dinner, please by all means go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions thank or comments? Thank you. <laughs> the, thank you very much. I, I'm sure that the, there is one thing that our students will learn is that at least to be aware of what's going on around them and uh, to think about a project as different steps from beginning to the end because normally they don't do this type of thing at school and uh, the JNG has given them an opportunity which they can benefit from first and then they can share with their uh, classmates and at the local level and hopefully if we can make a very good uh, either PowerPoint or uh, video, we will share it globally with our partners and uh, with JNG people, all the glo global nomads. Thank you very much. Okay? Thank you, Mohammed. <laughs> Maha, I think you might be muted. <laughs> yeah, good. Uh, thank you for everything, Ali. It's uh, we learned a lot from this session. Thank you very much. That's it. No question. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll send out an email with the recording and some more resources. And please don't be afraid to ask questions. And I look forward to seeing your projects later this year. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. <laughs>